seen uh, miracles that stagger the human mind. When the glory comes, you will. And I believe somehow the election is attached to that. I really do. And then notice it's the last trump that's fought over, not the first trump. The first term, nobody says anything. But the last one, they can't give him the last one. Because after the last trump, the Lord appears in glory. And I believe it's a prophetic timeline. And so we have to begin to cry out, cry out loud, do you want it to come? You know, in the days of Alexander Dowie and the great revivalist who built Zion, Illinois, they would come out before the service and take a sheet, big sheet-like uh, thing, and they would roll it out across the altar down in the front. And they'd roll this thing out every service. Do you know why? Because when the glory of God would hit that place, people would spit up tumors and, and blow them out of their mouth and they'd land on that sheet. They'd pull go, uh, uh, growths off their body. Cancers would go off their body. Dowie one time stepped off the stage and they had told a woman she had a cancer in her mouth, in the back of her mouth, and they said she couldn't live. Dowie said, the doctors say you can't live. But faith says that that thing is dead. And so if it's dead, Dr. Dowie said, I'll just take it out. And he reached in her mouth and pulled it out, tentacles and all, and held it in his hand. And when they would get through with a church service, that sheet would be covered with bloody tumors and things that had been vomited out or spit out of their mouth and just roll across that sheet. And at the end of it, they'd roll the sheet up, carry it out back and burn it and bring another one in for the next service. That's what happens when the glory comes. Now, I realize that people can't seem to tie the election to that glory. But why do you think the election is such a fight right now? I believe it was a prophecy hidden where it said at the last trump and then the Lord comes. And I'm not talking about the rapture. I don't know when that is. But I'm telling you, when the last trump sounds, I believe the greatest revival we've ever seen will just suddenly break through the earth and the enemy knows I must stop the last trump. That's all he knows to do. I don't know if anybody's amen or oh me but but this is the way it is. And once the glory comes, I really believe it's tied to it. Why is it so phenomenal right now? Why is it such a battle if not to hold back real power, not to hold back an invasion of God into the earth? I believe that's what it's all about. And politics is the place where spirit beings come together and do battle because it rules over the affairs of men. And notice the first thing they did is try to stop the churches, shut them down, shut the churches down. They really thought they had it. You know why they thought they had it with that mask they stuck over your mouth so you couldn't breathe? Do you know why they had, thought they had it? It's because seeker-friendly churches had already voted the power out of their church. They were in debt to some corporate structure that was building all of their buildings. And then the government knew they had them on their side. And the moment they decided decided to do it, they're the first people that stopped. And people like, you know, people that know power was raving about it. Well, this is what I believe it's all about. And I believe that it's, we're right on the brink of seeing it take place. Amen. Now, I'll show you something before uh, now that I've, I've got that said, but you just keep this in mind. When, when some of you saw the Second Samuel um, 15 through 18 thing that we did on a video and told the story of all the election and everything, in that story it said that he would be, he divided his army into three parts, that thrust through, I think, with three darts, Everything, threes. And now you saw Joe Biden fall three times. These threes are showing up as fast as they can. And now there's talk of a third party, threes. So you have to start looking at this. This thing is tied to revival and it's tied to the glory. Amen. Now I want to look at Galatians chapter 4. And let's go over there for just a few minutes. 
And um, let's see what the Lord is going to tell us about this. People may say, well, Brother Robin, when are you going to stop talking about the elections and things? Soon. Soon. Because something's about to happen that it'll be soon. Galatians 4, verse 4, listen to this. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Now, in the fullness of time, God sent his Son. What the fullness of time actually is saying here is that when that which has been filled. Fullness means that which has been filled. And it actually talks about a ship in the definition in the Greek. And it speaks of that which has been filled. The fullness of time when God sent his son. How does time fill up? You know, the other day on the last 11th hour, Austin came up and gave a word. And this is what he said. He said that when an anointing comes, it comes to stay. In other words, like if there's, there's an anointing here that diabetics get healed. There's an anointing here that things are never as bad as they seem. And, and just for instance, those two anointings, it's still here. It filled the time. It filled a certain time. And it never leaves. And so it's always here. If it was ever here, it's always here. It's whether you and I will act on it or not. That's why such miraculous things happen here. Now, how does time fill up? Well, in this way. Every time something comes from the Lord, it'll fill up a time and it's like a big square. The Lord showed it to me like that. It has little squares all over it. Every time a time is filled here, over here, up here, the puzzle gets, or the, the squares get closer and closer and closer. And the day will come when every square will be filled. And it was, every square was filled in Galatians 4. Right at the point of time, everything was filled up. And so God sent his son. Well, it's filling up again. Everything is filling up again. And so when the time is full, then there's a time and a season for every purpose under the heavens, Ecclesiastes declares. Now, uh, yeah, I don't know how much to tell you about that, if, if I should even say it. So when, when time is full, then there's no more time for that. In other words, that square is full. So Satan seeks to fill these up. He seeks to fill them up. The Bible said he seals up the sum. He's looking to seal up time in pockets of time to where he can operate in forever. That's what he's looking to do. You know, um, Austin came to me, and we were talking about this after what he had said last 11th hour, and um, he came up to me and asked me this. He said, what is the Ides of March? This is what he asked me. He said, what, what is that? Well, I had heard the term, but what the Ides of March is, it's the middle of the month. It's the middle of March. It's the 15th of March. That's the Ides of March. And on that day, the most famous thing that happened on the Ides of March is Julius Caesar was killed. The military took him down on the Ides of March. And on March 15th, on the Ides of March, this is when it coincides with us, and if you'll notice, after the Ides of March on the 15th, 
When Joe Biden started up those steps, this was five days, I think, later. It was five days after the Ides of March. I believe it was. Right after that came, because that time filled a time. It filled one of those squares. What is the Ides of March? Did you know on the 15th of March it was there that Hitler uh, told the leader of Czechoslovakia, we're invading you. And right after that meeting, it had such an impact, the man had a heart attack and died. So on the Ides of March. Now the Ides of March is the 74th day of, of uh, the Roman calendar. And it coincides with the 15th day of, of March here. Now, it was marked by several religious services, and it was notable for the Romans, listen to this, as a deadline date for settling affairs or settling debts. It was the day for settling debts on the Ides of March. Finalities came on the Ides of March. And it's like we were talking that day. On the 15th of March, it filled a time that is famous. There's a lot of things happened. You can look up what's happened on the, on the 15th of March. But it was when that came in the earth and the military took Julius Caesar's power from him. He was a tyrant. He was a tyrant. And I believe just like you and I were talking about. I believe on the 15th of March, a power came into the earth to remove tyrants from their seats of authority. And a few days after that, you saw Biden fall trying to get up to Air Force One, and he couldn't get up there. He finally had to just grab each side and run. The first time, it was a little stumble. The second one was a bigger stumble. And the third one, he fell all the way down. He's finished. He's done. That was his Obama seal moment, fell off the podium. That was it. Now there's no more authority. And it happened right after the Ides of March. That time is full. 